to leave. Yay. 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 Thank you so much, all of you, for your courage, uh, for being here today, to understand our shared humanity, to honor the lives of journalists killed in Gaza since the genocidal campaign began. In the last three months, we know the Israeli government forces have killed at least 112 journalists and media workers in Gaza. 56 journalists in Palestine have been arrested according to the Palest Palestinian Journalist Syndicate. But in the words of Yusuf Mahad Dawas, a young poet who died alongside his family in Gaza, we are not numbers. And it's so important, as being the only Palestinian American serving in Congress, that I try as much as I can to have many of my colleagues and so many others to understand we are just we cannot continue to just talk about the numbers. Palestinians are human beings. Behind each of these numbers was a name, was a life, with a loving family and a future. Israeli government's brutal attacks have made Gaza the deadliest place in the world for journalists and their families. This is according to the United Nations. Human rights experts have doc determined that Israel's government's attack on journalists were deliberate and part of a wider pattern to silence journalists covering Israel's war crimes. Palestine, uh, Palestinian journalist Anan Osmar says journalists and media workers are being targeted in order to, quote, shut down the coverage, end of quote, of Israeli's, Israeli government's atrocities. Multiple investigations, as you all know, from Human Rights Watch to Reuters to Amnesty International, have all concluded an Israeli airstrike that killed a group of journalists on October 13th was indeed targeted and deliberate. The Israeli government's military admitted to deliberately killing Al Jazeera journalist Hamza Dodur in a targeted airstrike that also killed AF, um, AFP journalist Mustafa Zorofiyah. Hamza was the oldest son of Al Jazeera's Gaza bureau no, chief, no, as you all know, no, Wael no, al no, no, a few months ago, a few months ago, Wael also lost 12 family members, including his wife, has 15-year-old son, his 7-year-old daughter, and his infant grandson in Israeli airstrike. Again, we are not Capital numbers, ground. we are human beings. Tonight, we also Stop hold space in an honor your, your, your genocide Tonight we also Arab hold people. space and honor the life of Shireen Abu Akla and continue to seek justice for her. Despite Netanyahu's ongoing genocidal campaign, Palestinian journalists have continued reporting from Gaza under extremely dangerous circumstances, y'all, to continue showing the world the truth about these atrocities. We call on the international community, please come together to investigate Israeli government's, government's war crimes for its repeated attacks on journalists. Please join me in this moment of silence for all the journalists who have been killed in the past three months as we honor their lives. Please, everyone, a moment of silence. I am legally holding. Allah Allah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up is uh, Representative. Oh, Corey Bush. Thank you so much. Oh, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to start by thanking Defending Rights and Dissent for organizing and for Freedom of the Press, uh, Freedom of the Press Foundation for co-sponsoring uh, this vigil for us to remember, to honor, to mourn the lives of journalists killed by the Israeli government in Gaza. I also want to thank my sister in service, Rep Tlaib, for your notable and courageous leadership in standing with humanity. We are here today because this Nila, no, we're doing this together. Needless, senseless, and merciless violence against Palestinians is the deadliest conflict in history for journalists. We are here today to mourn the over 100 journalists killed by the Israeli government. We also remember that those killed were more than just journalists, as we just heard Rep Tlaib say. They were mothers and fathers, brothers, sisters, daughters, sons, friends, and loved ones. One story that stands out to me is that of 
um, Y.L. Adadu, the Gaza Bureau, Bureau Chief for Al Jazeera. Since October 7th, Y.L. has lost more than 10 of his family members. First, his wife, daughter, son, grandson, and at least eight other relatives were killed by Israeli airstrikes. And just last week, his son, Hamza Al Dadu, who was also a journalist and cameraman for Al Jazeera, was killed when Israeli in an Israeli airstrike targeted his car. This horrific story of an entire family senselessly being killed is a painful reality, not just of jur for journalists, but for so many of the Palestinians in the region. The role of a journalist, particularly in the face of conflict, is to capture the stories, the raw emotions, and the overlooked realities that often go unseen, unheard, untold. In other words, with their phones, with their pens, notepads, and cameras, and recorders, they set out to uncover the truth. This role is significant when it comes to the journalists, particularly the Palestinian journalists, who set out to share the stories and perspectives of Palestinians. The significance of this lies in the reality that Palestinian voices are being intentionally silenced by the Israeli government and by our own government. This makes uncovering the truth of what's happening in Palestine not only difficult and dangerous, but essential. The Israeli government's silencing of and violence against journalists began long before October the 7th. In fact, for decades, as Palestinians have lived under their, under their illegal occupation, the silencing of their voices and stories has been a tactic to maintain, maintain control and maintain support from the West. After all, it's much easier to ignore and cover up injustice if it goes untold. What we have seen since October 7th is the continuation of a pattern of systematic violence. The Committee to Protect Journalists found that before October 7th, Israeli soldiers had been killed at least have had killed at least 20 journalists over 22 years and none had ever been charged or held accountable. One of those journalists was the prominent which we just heard Palestinian American Al Jazeera report, reporter Shireen Abu Akleh who was killed by an Israeli soldier while wearing a press vest. I have long supported accountability for Shireen. In fact, in May of last year, I stood just over there um, at the Triangle and joined Congressman Andre Carson in reintroducing the Justice for Shireen Act. We still need justice for Shireen, and we also need justice for Hamza, uh, uh, Hamza Al Dadu, for uh, Somer Abu Dhaka, and every other journalist that has been killed by the Israeli government. I would like, also like to call out the silence by the press in this country and most of the West as their yes. very own peers are being slaughtered for doing the very jobs they do. Mm, yes. Why it is that so many had the, I, I'm trying to figure out why it is that so many had the courage to speak out about the killing of Jamal Khashoggi and the arbitrary detention of Evan Gershkovich. But few have anything to say as dozens and dozens of journalists are killed in Gaza. Why do we yet again see a red line in our solidarity and humanity when the journalists are Palestinian? If democracy truly dies in darkness, what does that say about the collective silence about these mass atrocities? Right. Yes. So let me be clear as I possibly can. If you actually believe in freedom of the press, your solidarity cannot be con conditional. Intentionally or dis indiscriminately tar targeting journalists, it is a war crime. Just like the targeting of all civilians is a war crime. Yes. Just like the targeting of medical facilities is a war yes. crime. Right. Just like the forced starvation and the withholding of water and electricity is a war crime. Yes. Just right. like yes. the collective punishment of 2.3 million people is a war crime. Yeah. Yeah. This right. needs to stop. Stop the war crimes. Stop our government's complicity. Stop the violence against journalists and against all civilians. Civilians. We demand accountability and a ceasefire now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.